Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. I'm Madison and today I thought we would go over some propagations that we took together. Oh gosh, it's been a minute. I'm not sure exactly the date. I'll put how long it's been on the screen somewhere, but we've got some bad, we've got some good, we've got some kind of in between. I haven't touched these guys um, since we took the cuttings and put them in here together. The only thing I've done is top off water and um, maybe not as frequently as I should have been. So let's just get into it. And then I think we're just gonna give them a quick repot as well, get them in some dirt and then see how they do in the dirt after a few months or a few weeks or whatever. Let's start with this guy over here. So. Let me show you the back. The water is looking a uh, very murky. Like I said, I have not, <laughs> haven't done anything um, as far as like cleaning the water out. I haven't changed the water. I've literally just been topping the water off. And sometimes with um, some water that has a little bit of fertilizer in it. So, oh, I just lost a cutting. All right, let's just start pulling these out. All right. Okay. Oh, look at that. So again, disgusting water. We've got a couple of dead leaves floating around in there. I don't know if you can see that. But let's see. Those roots look pretty darn good, actually. Got a little algae buildup. We have some dead leaves on here. And, um, you know, I'm not going to be, I don't think I'm going to pull them apart individually. It's just going to cause more harm than it will good, I think. So I'm just going to kind of like, pull out any like obviously dead stems. So it looks like we lost one cutting. Oh, my dog's trying to get him. We lost one cutting there. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of pull off any dead leaves or any other dead strands that I'm seeing. We've lost, we've lost a few in the process there. I was not being great about um, keeping up on like refilling the water in these at all. Um, so, I'm pretty impressed with how this did. It's a beautiful looking bunch here still. So I think what I'm gonna do is after we look at this one, I'm just gonna take them both and just pot them in a pot together and just call it good. So look at this guy again. We'll turn to the back. Really gross looking water. <laughs> um, but let's see. What do we have happening here? Oop, I should have. Shook that off a little bit more. Okay, get this out of here. So definitely not as impressive of roots happening, which I'm pretty surprised. I guess they're okay up here. Can you see that? Um, but yeah, I'm honestly kind of surprised that these roots aren't as um, like, I don't know, they're not robust, but I'm just surprised there's not as many roots on this one as the other bundle that we pulled out. Because this one just looks so much happier to me than that other one. Like, there's just tons of growth coming off of here. Um, so hopefully this transfers all right into soil. I don't think we'll have too hard of a time. Honestly, I expected way more um, dead stuff out of here. This one does have more, like, dead leaves in it. I can definitely hear that. That's going to be a really nice plant. Really nice full plant. Got a bunch of pretty decent looking roots there, and that'll be really easy to pot. All right, so let's look at this one. Oh, I didn't even mention, I'm so sorry. So these are all the Tradescantia Nanook. No, Tradescantia Zebrina is what these guys are. And then this guy is our Purple Heart uh, Tradescantia. Um, I don't remember the exact name of this guy, but it's, you'll find it commonly called Purple Heart. This one did not fare quite as well as you can see. We have got a lot of crispy stuff happening. Um, like I said, I have not touched this at all since we put them in the water together. Um, so we've got some dead stuff to go through on here. This one's gonna be um, not quite as nice as those other ones. So let's just kind of see what happened. Like I said, I was really not doing a very good job of keeping up on making sure that the water was topped off in here. Oh, okay, but Let's see. You can't really see the water in here, but it's gross, trust me. It's about as gross as the other stuff, same color. Okay, but the roots actually look pretty darn good on here. Hopefully you can see. So, 
let this be a lesson. Keep up on your water propagations and keeping the water in there. So because I was not doing a great job at keeping up on making sure that there was water in here all the time and like up to a high enough point, I lost all of these leaves and then it would just shoot out new growth at the tips of um, the stems. So because of that, we're gonna have a ton of bare node. Let me just pull some of, pull some of this apart here. There we go. But yeah, because of that, I've got just a ton of bare node. So we've got some root and then um, just a bunch of bare node and then some growth at the end. <sighs> I don't know if I even want to keep these because I really don't want a plant that just has a little bit of growth at the end of a long, empty, kind of janky looking stem here. You can see it's just, it's just not the cutest. There's a couple things that we could do with this. We could either just pot this right in a pot and just be okay with how it looks. Um, not what I'm gonna do, cause I don't like the way that looks personally. This one's got such good roots. So it's kind of a shame to start fresh again, but can I get that in focus? Or, we can just snap it here and start fresh and just pot this in there um, and just cut off the top piece. Now, really what we could do is we could start fresh two ways and we could keep this. We could wait for this to kind of callus over a bit and then we can pot this directly in some soil or in some moss or something like that and get some roots happening out of this bottom part or this node here. Um, and then get a plant started from this top part again. I'm just gonna toss this one. I'm just gonna pot the bottom part that has roots directly in the soil, and then it'll be really bare on top for a while, but it should start pushing out some new growth from the top here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for these. I was gonna do the opposite and toss the rooted part, um, but some of these rooted parts already have some growth happening, some new growth popping off along the stems here. So. Again, I'm just gonna pop that off at one of the top stems there, stick these bottom ones in the soil, and then, yeah, I think it'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> Here we have it. We've got our bottom cuts, I guess you would call them, of our Purple Heart Tritoscantia. I've got my bucket of top sad cuttings here. I'm just going to trash these, honestly. I could, like I said, I could propagate the tops of them um, and start fresh, you know, two times, but I don't have the space for that or the energy for that, frankly. So we're just going to go with this way. I think it's absolutely fine. And like I said, I'm just going to like boop, pop them in some dirt. We'll do our Zabrina first. So all I'm going to do is put some dirt on the bottom here set them in there and then backfill a little bit. And hopefully I won't get too much dirt all over the leaves. I think that'll be good. And I'm just using my like regular soil mix here. Um, uh, just like a plain tuber mix. It's got some perlite and a little bit of orchid bark mix in there. I do have more orchid bark and stuff like that, but I'm going to save that for another repot that I'll be doing here. <laughs> Sorry, my dog kicked the tripod. I'll be saving that for another repot that I'm doing here in a minute. So I'm going to get some soil in the bottom here. So we've got some soil in there. Hopefully you can see. I'm just going to set that in. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more soil in. Okay. Just kind of nuzzle them in. Kind of shake it around in there so I can kind of get it in the front without shoveling it in the front. I do usually prefer my Tritoscantia to just have them all facing one direction. So we have kind of like a weird bald looking back, but a nice full front section. Um, I just find they tend to grow better that way because if one part isn't getting enough light, it's just going to get really bald um, and kind of sad looking. So I've got a pitcher of water here. I'm just going to pour a little in here just to kind of get the soil moistened up and so that the uh, roots aren't shocked too much by just being in dry soil, going from um, just sitting in water to dry soil. So hopefully this will help transition a little bit easier and it'll lock them in place a little bit more. Look how nice that looks. Like that's not too bad. That looks pretty good. So yeah, like I said, hopefully these guys will transition all right, going from the uh, water just to the soil. Um, no special soil or anything like that. I will try to keep up with um, watering more than I did when they were just in the cups of water. Um, so that way I'm not getting those sad um, 
tops of the plant all over again. Oh, I've got a little dead piece. We'll just get rid of that. I just need to keep on top of watering with this guy so that the top of the plant doesn't get all naked and dry. Um, and that way it'll just stay looking nicer for longer. And then, yeah, I'm sure I will end up doing this whole process over again eventually because it's just kind of how these plants go. Um, but it's, it's not a big deal to me. It's kind of fun to do. Got another dead piece. I'm sure I'll be finding more dead pieces here. I'm really happy with how this little pot looks, even with some dead pieces popping out here. And um, yeah, I would call this a propagation success. Let's move on to our not so successful propagation. Let me move this behind so you can see it. Can you see that? Yeah, that looks really nice. Let's move on to this one. So. This is what we have left of our Purple Heart Tritoscantia. We are going to pot this in this little guy here, just like so. So again, I'm just going to scoop up some soil. Now, I am not expecting all of these um, rooted pieces to make it in here because I'm not giving them too much room to breathe. I'm not like worrying about separating them or anything like that because... That's just too much work. Honestly, I think they'll be fine just kind of like this. And I would rather have it be, again, more of a concentrated little cluster. They're nice and snug. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit water. I'm going to try and not do as much as I did on that last one. But that way it's just kind of locked in there. And there we have it. We've got our sad little pot of purple heart Tritoscantia. So would I consider this an absolute... Um, you know, successful water propagation. No, I would not. We did not end up with a beautiful pot, um, you know, just right after it, like we did with our Nanook over here. Why do I want to keep calling this Nanook? But like our Sabrina over here, honestly, it's totally fine. Kind of what I expected. Well, not exactly what I expected. I did expect these to be a little bit better rooted and I expected not to have so much crisped up at the top, but again, that's not entirely the plant's fault. That is mostly my fault. So, you know, we live and we learn. It's not a big deal. This guy will hopefully start popping off more growth here. There were already some little um, growth points in there, but I think I kind of buried them. Um, I'm not too worried about it. If they want to push through, they will. This is kind of a, you know, survival of the fittest situation here. If these don't make it, it's okay. This is more of an experiment anyway. So I will definitely keep you guys updated either way. If we lose a bunch, if we keep a bunch, um, yeah, I'll let you guys know. Yellow. <laughs> um, I just realized I filmed all about those, um, Tritoscantia propagations that I took, but I didn't tell you guys about how all of those golden pothos nodes were doing. So let's take a peek in here and I'm going to show you. They live under this table here. I think you can see. So yeah, this is a tabletop up here and we've got a light situated underneath and I keep a bunch of propagations under here. So let's pull out this guy. I have only watered this, I think one time, um, maybe twice. And by watering it, I mean, I just take, I take my squeezy bottle and we're just like, you know, squeeze from afar into there. I haven't really opened this up and looked in here too much other than tossing a couple other plant cuttings into here. Let me take this off of here. Whew. As you can probably see, there's a lot of condensation happening in here. I've only had the one vent open. Um, so, and it's just barely cracked open there. Hopefully you can kind of see. Wowza. I'm going to pull you off of here again. Let's just take a look. Okay, so we've got a lot of growth happening in here. Not necessarily all uh, Golden Pothos growth. We've got a lot, let me move the spider plant out of the way again. A lot of just like random stuff here that has come out um, just from the moss. It's getting a little wrinkly. Hopefully you can tell there. Just very wrinkled. It's a little soft, but I don't think it's like totally done for. So I'm just going to leave this in here. I'm going to try to pull out all of the... Uh, random stuff that's in here. Let me put this long ways again so you can kind of see. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to pull out all the weeds. Do you see all of the weeds that's happening in here? Look at all those. I've got like full on random plants growing in here. What is this? What the heck? Okay. 
We pulled all of this out of there. Just a bunch of random plants, um, weeds if you want to call them that. But yeah, glad to have all of that out of there. So now that we have that gone, we can really kind of see what's going on in here a little bit better. So let me see if I can show you. I've got some live moss happening here that is just so exciting. I love it when the moss comes to life again. Um, as you can see, I stuck some random little pieces of begonia in here, some random little like fallen pieces of um, string of turtles. Um, I've got a random little pot of a uh, some kind of, I think this is a little philodendron birkin that I chucked in here. I had completely forgotten that I tossed an alocasia corm in here, so I'm pretty sure this is a little regal shield alocasia corm that is popping off a couple of cute little leaves. So how exciting. Nothing too crazy happening in here. Um, not growing as quickly as I would like, but also, I mean, I'm not paying that much attention to it whatsoever. It's just back in that corner over there um, in like the entire corner of the whole room here. I'm going to leave these in here for now. The next step, probably in the next week or so, um, is going to be to pull all of these out that have a leaf growing already, um, pot them in their own little containers, and then uh, we'll just kind of leave the nodes in here. I don't think I have any that are fully rotten that I can see. I'm not getting too deep in there though. So um, hopefully these all stay pretty nice and alive at least. Hopefully, the, I'm sorry that if the light is flickering up here from my grow light, but um, yeah, hopefully those all continue to do well. So far, so good. All right, I went ahead and took all of the cuttings of, from the golden pothos that we put in here that had at least one leaf. Here they all are, and I'm just gonna pot them all up, I think, and just into one pot, and then that way, all of the nose left in here will have plenty of room to grow. And I think I only pulled out two that were totally rotted, so that's pretty darn good. Here we have all of those single leaf golden pothos cuttings all potted together in one pot, and I think it just looks beautiful. I can't wait for this to be a big, bushy, trailing pot one day. And here we have that pot of Zabrina looking gorgeous. I've had no more dying pieces or anything like that. It's just been thriving. Here's a look at the purple heart propagations that we took after five weeks, and they're looking really good. We have growth happening on, it looks like, most of the nodes. And yeah, I'm really pleased. It's just been sitting in the window, and it's doing really well. All right, you guys, I think that's going to do it today for checking out all of those propagations that we took previ previously. Um, I am pretty darn pleased with how everything has turned out so far. Like I said, not 100% success rate, but we didn't expect that anyway. Um, I feel like that's pretty rare to happen. If you have 100% success rate for anything, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I feel like if, if you have like 80% and up, that's pretty darn good um, because, you know, sometimes things are just out of our control and it's hard to know exactly what the issue is with plants all the time. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this went. And yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me on this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel, please subscribe for more and I will see you guys next time.